So there's been a lot of chatter recently about, you know, Biden's age and his cognitive abilities because some videos went viral where in one instance, um, I guess he was at the G7 summit and they were watching parachuters or something. All these world leaders were standing there watching these parachuters come down. And uh, at some point after one of them lands, Biden kind of turns around and seemingly aimlessly wanders off, right? And looks just like a total lost old man who doesn't know what's going on. Um, and so that be that was big in right wing circles. And then what happened is the uh, the Democratic side came in and said, this is actually misinformation. You guys are doing fake news because if you pan out and you look at the full screen, there's other parachuters that are behind Biden um, and other people that are there. And he turns and he starts walking towards them and he talks to them. And um, then eventually Georgia Maloney, uh, the Italian prime minister, comes and grabs him and turns him back around to look in the same direction. All the rest of them are looking. I'm sure you've all have seen the video by now. Um, so anyway, that became a, a big story. And so, you know, Biden's uh, mental capabilities are in the news again. There's also that other video. We did some event with Barack Obama. Barack Obama seemingly, uh, you know, helps him off stage because Biden is waving to the crowd, but he kind of looks lost again. And so Obama grabs him and brings him off stage with him. And um, that's the that's what everybody's arguing over. Right. So Piers Morgan has this panel. We got Jenk Uger, we got Tommy Lauren and we got Brian Tyler Cohen. Um, Brian Tyler Cohen is, of course, a Democrat. Tommy Lauren is, of course, a Republican. And Jenk is uh, definitely lefty, but also very critical of Biden and the Democratic Party. So here we go. We're going to dive into it. And they're going to they're going to have a kind of a heated debate here about how much this stuff matters and the mental facilities of or faculties of both of the candidates, et cetera, et cetera. Here we go. This amounts to elder abuse at this point, in my opinion, and shame on Jill Biden for not stepping in when her husband is clearly failing. But I would also say this, something that uh, President, former President Barack Obama has that current President Joe Biden doesn't have is he does have his mental acuity and faculties. And Barack Obama knows that the optics of him grabbing Joe's arm probably wouldn't be great, but he also understands that the alternative would be to let Joe stand there and freeze. So to me, it's more telling when you look at former President Obama and his actions than looking at Joe Biden. So for all of the Democrat influencers, many of whom are paid by Biden PACs, who want to say that that video was somehow misinformation or disinformation, well, it's clear we, as day what we saw in that clip. You can't dispute it. And Barack Obama grabbing his arm, I think, even further proves that point. So by the way, you guys just saw the video on the right-hand side of the screen there. P post in the comment section below what you make of it. Um, I mean, look, I think, I think Biden just always looks like a lost old man now, Right. He's really, really old, <laughs> you know, and he has all those senior moments and he says things that are bad and he forgets things. That... So, I, I mean, I guess I don't know why that video in particular became the next big one, but we see this all the time anywhere he goes. You post below uh, what you think of it. Is it as like big of a bombshell as the right is making it out to be or is it just... It's just another day of Joe Biden being Joe Biden, and let's stop pretending like it's a big deal. All right, let's continue. Or he was about to freeze, or he was about to maybe do something even more embarrassing, and the former president had to intervene, even though that in and of itself looked bad. There's no way to spin this, guys. Well, let's see if there is a way to spin it. Brian uh, Tyler Cohen. I mean, look, I'm not MAGA. I'm not Republican. I'm not right wing. I'm a kind of old-fashioned liberal of the Bill Maher variety, who oh. also has been... <laughs> so you are right wing. <laughs> Piers, stop it, man. Who are you kidding? You're nobody's lefty. I, I mean, if I'm being as kind as possible to Piers, I would say he's a centrist, right? But I think a more accurate description is center-right. You know, it's one thing if you if he writes down his positions on the various issues down on a piece of paper and he says, look, I'm a liberal. Okay, that might be true. If you go position for position and say, yes, on paper, you are that. But there's a difference between what you are nominally versus what you are effectively. And I think effectively, most of the stuff he covers, most of his rhetoric, most of his focus, really helps to, to verify more right-leaning ideology. I don't think that's controversial to say, right? Okay, here we go. Uh, expressing his concern about what is happening with Joe Biden. So to dismiss it all when people point out what's going on with Biden as just a MAGA plot is demonstrably untrue. Pierce, thank you for having me, first of all. Second of all, I was literally in the room. I was there, I was at that event at the Peacock Theater at LA Live. Joe Biden was doing what he always does, which is just waving at the crowd. He has a long history of working rope lines ad nauseum during the State of the Union. He was in that room talking to people so long that, this, that the C-SPAN cameras literally turned off. And that's what he was doing on that stage. He was just waving at people who were waving back at him to the point where 
Barack Obama came around and just put his arm around Joe, you know, his own vice president. And they walked off stage together, probably because Barack Obama had less of an interest in staying and waving at the crowd as long as Joe Biden did. But this is who Joe Biden is. With that said, I understand why people like Tommy Lahren and the right more broadly have a vested interest in perpetuating this idea that Joe Biden is in the throes of cognitive decline. Yeah, I don't, I don't have one. Right. I don't have that vested interest. In fact, I, I, well, I'm, I'm, have one, I, just, I have one conversation with Joe Biden in my life. Uh, after Bo Biden died in 2015, I wrote a column saying he was a fantastic guy. He used to come on my show a lot at CNN and how sad it was and that America may have lost, without even knowing it, someone who could have been one of the great presidents of the country. I really felt Bo was on a fast track to the top, but it was a tragedy. And I, I had an amazing call from Joe Biden out of the blue. But I can tell you two things. He, in that conversation, he was incredibly open and honest with me about it all. It went on for about 15 minutes. But he was also lucid. He was eloquent. He was articulate. And it was a perfectly normal conversation. It bore no relation to what Joe Biden now talks like. On this point, I think that's undeniable. You go back and watch the 2012 debate with Paul Ryan versus Joe Biden. It is absolutely a different man. There's no doubt about it. It's, it's, as, it's clear to literally anybody who's being honest. At the same time, even go back to 2015 or 2016, Joe Biden did an interview and he was asked about Hillary Clinton versus Bernie Sanders. And he starts talking about, you know, how he admires and appreciates Bernie Sanders. And even in that interview, only going back to 2016, not even 10 years ago. And he is a different guy, right? And so, I, I don't know. Is Brian going to try to disagree with that? Uh, that'd be a tough sell. When I see him in public. And I would go back even further, and I would say this is more unsettling, which is in 1986, there's a, a clip on YouTube uh, where Joe Biden's a senator, and he gives an absolutely ferocious uh, onslaught against apartheid in South Africa in a Senate hearing. And it was all <clears> televised. <throat> and if you compare that man to what we now see and hear, there is literally no comparison. It is, it is clear evidence before you that this fast-talking, eloquent, loquacious, fiercely intelligent senator from 86 is now a shadow of that man. And I don't say that gleefully, like I say. I just say it, I say it sadly, but it's obvious. Pierce, everybody ages. Joe Biden has obviously aged. But we're not all president of the United States. Oh, is, is he as fast as he used to be? Of course not. But here's what I would offer in, in rebuttal to that is we're sitting here wondering if Joe Biden has the ability to do the job that he is literally doing right now and doing more effectively than any president in our lifetime. Why is, is he too old to have so to, terrible it, then? Pierce, is he too old to have added 15 million jobs to the economy? Is he too old to have uh, reached our stock market to a record high? Is he too old to have brought inflation down to its target 3%? Is he too old to have brought wages up to exceed inflation? Is he too old to have signed the American Rescue Plan, the Inflation Brian, Reduction Brian, Act, Brian, the gun safety bill? Brian, all he, all of these Brian, things, he Brian, is this old. If he's so great, why is, why is his approval rating at a record low? Why is he now losing in most polls in almost all the swing states? And why, Respect, are, why, are, alarm, Pierce, why are alarm bells? Well, I would ask, I'd say one third thing. Why are two thirds of Democrats also of the belief he's too old to carry on with the job. And when you put all that Respect together, why, don't, why do you want him to run? It might be the only way you lose. Respectfully, Pierce, I would, I would argue that the reason that this, is, that this is such a top of mind issue is because we have media like this right now, like Fox News in the United States, like Newsmax, like OAN. Yeah, but I'm not right wing. I mean, I think he has half a point, right? He has half a point that if you put the onus and you put the focus on this and you drive it home over and over and over, there was a breakdown recently where Sinclair, you know, they own all like the local news stations and they had the same thing about Biden's age and it was like everywhere around the country. Yeah, if you pump it out there as much as possible, it becomes a bigger narrative than it would have been otherwise, right? I think that's true. But also, Brian Tyler Cohen can't deny the reality that Biden has lost more than one step. So it happens to be true. It's a true thing. But it's also being driven home relentlessly ad nauseum, ad infinitum, which perhaps makes it have a bigger impact than it would otherwise if it was talk about, talked about in context and perspective. So he has half a point. And I have to say, I, I respect the fact that he took it back to policy. And he was like, basically, he's like, what the fuck does it matter if all these things are getting done and if all these things are good? That's his point. And look, I think that's a fair point. That's a point I made prior to Joe Biden helping to arm and fund a genocide and run, run defense for a genocidal regime in Israel. So, look, I think all those points are fair. I think it's the best argument you can possibly make sitting in the seat he's sitting in, but it denies the reality of Gaza and what Biden has done. Um, and it sort of downplays the reality that this isn't just a right-wing narrative. There's also a lot of truth in the fact that he's lost multiple steps. I'm not right-wing, Brian. That's your problem. Because, the Achilles heel is I'm literally not conservative. Everybody knows that. So you can say... But we're show yeah, yeah, Piers, <laughs> you got to stop with that. Oh, God. We've heard, this, we've heard this from so many people who ended up becoming the biggest conservatives on planet Earth. So I, just spare me on that. Mm.
But right, I'm saying shows having, like but this, this, but I'm literally but we're having not, this conversation. I'm not of the right, Pierce, so it doesn't work. Pierce, Pierce, we're having this conversation, and this conversation is that that drum is beat relentlessly in the United States because it's it's used as a distraction to not talk about the accomplishments. All right, let me go to check. You've been waiting patiently. Okay, um, Piers, I would... Yeah, Tommy, quickly, yeah. Piers, I would just want to interject real quickly before, because I have to say this. I, Brian, there is nothing I would love more than for the Democrats to stick with Joe Biden as their nominee. I have no dog in this fight. I hope you guys run Joe, because I think he's the easiest candidate to beat. So when you say, oh, it's us that are trying to make it seem like he's old. No, if you leave the guy in, it's much easier for my guy to beat him, okay? I think what the writing on the wall is, is you're going to swap him out. You being the Democrat party, you're going to swap him out. I'm far more concerned about a different Democrat being the nominee against Donald Trump. I hope that Joe Biden is your nominee. So any dog that you think I have in this fight of beating the drum that he's old? No, Brian, I just have eyes and ears and I am lucid enough to understand what I'm seeing. I just wanted to make that point. OK, uh, Cenk, I mean, I think you and I, have, we've talked about this before. This has to be a concern, doesn't it, for America? Yeah. Yeah, it's actually very depressing on a l- number of fronts, including that my side, the Democrats, have now become like MAGA. Um, sorry, Brian, I love you. I think you're a great guy, super smart. You lay out your case as well as anybody can lay it out. But we do all have eyes and ears. And and the Democrats are starting to look like MAGA, denying that, you know, that MAGA says, oh, Trump won the election in 2020. You have to be a lunatic to believe that. But if you think that uh, Joe Biden is a secret dynamo behind the scenes, as the Democrats claim, you got to be borderline lunatic to believe that. No, the guy is in terrible, terrible shape. And if he has dementia, uh, they get more stubborn. And so what if he digs in and he's like, I don't care. And his mind is actually affected by the ailments that we're seeing with our own eyes. So uh, the Democrats have become so authoritarian that they're like, oh, my God, what if Bernie Sanders wins? What if a progressive wins? Let's all bow our head to the mad king. And that's what he is at this. Uh, Joe Biden is a secret dynamo behind the scenes. Of the- I don't care. And his mind is actually affected by the ailments that we're seeing with our own eyes. So uh, the Democrats have become so authoritarian that they're like, oh my God, what if Bernie Sanders wins? What if a progressive wins? Let's all bow our head to the mad king. And that's what he is at this point. So we have two mad kings running. One's a moron to begin with. Donald Trump's one of the dumbest people who's ever been in political office. And now his brain is melting too. He's saying, oh, you do look at Joe Biden. He has dementia. My doctor, Ronnie Johnson, he, he told me I'd... it's Ronnie Jackson. You idiot. Okay, so check, check, we have me, two okay, blithering check, morons check, check, and, and on that people point. that are affected by mental ailments okay. running for office. But check, it's here's a the deeply embarrassing moment for America. Here's the difference. I, and I've watched a lot of Trump recently. He, he rang me a couple of months ago. We had a long chat. And he sounded completely normal. Exactly the same as he sounded when I did Celebrity Apprentice back in 2008. Honestly, he could have been exactly the same guy. Trump's never had a drink, never had a cigarette, never had a drug. Uh, for all that people think of him, he's still <clears throat> basically the same guy he's always been. Now, he free rolls... I don't think so. Well, he free rolls in the way he speaks. And you can go back and watch him. I used to watch him over the boardroom on Apprentice night after night. And he'd say lots of stuff. And some of it wouldn't stack up to a fact check. And some of it would, didn't sound quite right. But uh, I would say there's been uh, no cognitive decline in Trump. That he's always been basically the same kind of guy. He's a little bit older. But when you think he's only three years younger than Biden, my God, I mean, the difference between the two of them. And as I thought, uh, Bill Ackman. OK, no, see, no. See, yeah, again, this is where Pierce bias is coming out here. Because the difference between Biden and Trump on this particular question is optics. Biden looks older. He walks more like an old man. He's slower, like more like an old man. Donald Trump is definitely appears more energetic. He appears more charismatic and all those things. But when you like, if you just transcribe a Trump speech or a Trump commentary or Trump answering questions in an interview, and you just write down the stuff he says, he is fucking gonzo also. Okay, he's done. He's done. He's cooked. And, you know, Jank brings up the most recent example right there, but there's dozens of examples like this where he, he, as he's bragging about acing a fucking dementia test, he fucks up the name of the doctor who gave it to him, and then he fucks it up again. So the fact is, it's smoke and mirrors with Trump, right? He's in a similar place. Biden is mentally. He really is. But all of the bluster and the charisma and, like, you know, looking more lively, that tricks people into thinking like, oh yeah, no, he's okay. But it's not, you got to look past the optics, bro. It's not, the optics are not the only thing that matters. The actual substance also matters, right? And then to get back to Brian Tyler Cohen's point and let, to leave policy out of the conversation completely is a fool's errand when you're talking about politics, right? So I think Jenk is the most correct here where he's pointing out, yeah, Biden 
Biden's got all these uh, mental problems and he's declining and all that stuff. But let's not pretend like Trump isn't also. I agree with peers that the perception from your average American is going to be that there's more decline in Biden. I think the perception is that. But again, I think an actual fair analysis based on the things they say, transcribing something Trump says and reading it, it's fucking garbage. It's he's gone too mentally. You know, Warren Buffett's in his 90s. And he doesn't sound anything like the way Joe Biden does. It's not about his age. It's about his yeah. mental acuity. And I just think, I tell, you but, when I tell you when the chickens come home to roost for everybody trying to defend this or trying to make some equivalence with Trump. June the 27th, these two guys are going to get on a stage in a live television debate that will break all records, I think, for ratings probably around the world. And you know what's going to happen over 90 minutes, wherever long it is? Donald Trump is going to take Joe Biden to pieces. See, now he has no idea what he's talking about. Look, what happened the last time? What happened in 2020? One of the debates, Donald Trump came out super fucking aggressive, went over the top times a trillion. And what happened? At the end of that debate, everybody said, even Republicans were out there saying, yeah, Biden won this debate. Why? Because Trump looked unhinged. So Piers doesn't understand, for every Achilles heel you point out about Biden, there's an equal and opposite Achilles heel for Trump. Yeah, Biden's is, he's slow, he looks really fucking old. All that is totally true. But also, by the way, they put the fucking bar in the basement and all he has to do is clear that bar and everybody will say he did well, right? Just like with the State of the Union speech, that's exactly what happened with the State of the Union speech. But what Piers doesn't realize is that Trump's approach also has colossal downsides that he can come across as berating and nasty and arrogant and you could lose a debate solely based on that. So what's going to happen in the debate? I don't fucking know and neither do you. It's possible that what Piers is saying is true and Trump can reel it in a little bit and not be too mean and too berating and he can end up winning like that. Or it's possible Biden clears that really low bar and Trump goes over the top and it ends up looking like Biden's winning. Look, we'll end on this point. We'll end on this point. This is the worst election of my life. By far. Not even close. Even 2016 Hillary versus Trump looks a million times better compared to this. Worst election. And the, the massive downsides of both electorally are tremendous. Trump has trying to steal the 2020 election still as a massive issue. And I know that because every single election since then, Republicans have gotten waxed. And the more Trump-like Republicans have gotten the most waxed. That is a huge, huge issue for them. Roe v. Wade, a huge, huge issue for them. Extremism. When people think of Trump, your average American, they think of extremist. His cultists don't, but everybody else thinks extremist. Convicted criminal. We've never been in this place before where somebody's running for president and they're a convicted criminal and the Democrats can clobber them over the head with that 24-7. And I'm sorry, but that, to your average normie American, they're going to be like, I'd prefer a non-convicted criminal, please. So those are massive downsides for Trump. The massive downsides for Biden are, let's keep it real. He looks like he's going to croak any minute now. He just does. Looks like he's going to croak any minute now. So we have that. And we have, he's pissed off virtually his entire base with his foreign policy in Gaza. Arab Americans and Muslim Americans, gone. Gone. He's getting a lower percentage of black support than he did in 2020. He's getting a lower percent of Hispanic support than he did in 2020. Young people are furious. They're fleeing him super fast. So those are his downsides. What he's doing in Gaza and the fact he's barely there. And so it really is a race to the bottom. But anybody who's trying to portray it like, oh, yeah, no, it's a slam dunk debate victory and it'll be a slam dunk election and all that stuff. That's just, you can't know. Nobody knows. You can't know. You have to weigh all the factors. And unfortunately, that's not the case. But anyway, it's a good debate. It goes on much longer. Definitely go check it out. Hey, y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop. And watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.